Um, today I'm here to talk about um, teaching your test framework or your test runner to speak Lava. So how many people are already using Lava and, and quite familiar with it? Okay, how many people have just heard about Lava, they're interested in what it is and trying to use it? Okay. Um, so for those of you who are new, very new to Lava, I'm gonna be going into a little bit more depth than you're probably quite ready to grasp. Um, so there's a number of prior ELC presentations on you know, introductions to Lava, and actually Jan Simone Mueller just gave a, a, a talk yesterday uh, that, that gives you a good overview of it and things like that, but um, I, I will do my best to not dive too deep to lose you. So, most of us already have tests, right? So we're coming to Lava with tests that already exist. You already have a team that's been writing tests in some kind of a test framework of some kind. So, wouldn't it be great if Lava could auto-discover your tests, just like PyTest or something like that can do, right? Just point it at a folder, say PyTest, and it goes. Um, wouldn't it be great if you could just run the same commands in your CI system or in Lava as your developers are already running, right? You don't have to do any special incantations for Lava. You just run the same thing. Um, so this is, you know, to keep it simple, and I, I don't want to put the word stupid in there, so I changed it to smarty pants, but um, that's a you know, common approach in software. Um, also, you don't really want to re rewrite your tests just to make them work for Lava. So you know, don't repeat yourself. Don't, don't add extra work. Um, and also, you know, the traditional approach in Lava world is to do post-processing of your results post-process parsing. Um, wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to do that? So that's what I'm talking about today. So let's just go a little bit into the life cycle of a test case in Lava. What, by this, what I mean is what shows up on the dashboard in Lava and why? Why does it show up as a test case? So the reason is that there's these special signals. So number one, this Lava start or lava signal start TC ping test, right? So once you have started a test run, lava does a bunch of other things I'm not gonna go into you that but before uh, the test starts running, but once you have started a test run, lava is only observing standard out, period. That's what it is doing, unless you hit a timeout or something like that. So it is literally looking for the string lava signal start TC, and then whatever the test case name is. And then you've got some stuff, and then you've got lava signal NTC, then it knows the test case is done. And then it knows what the result is by lava signal test case, test case ID, so on. Okay, so in this case, this test failed, um, but you can see at the very, very top, the plus lava test case ping test, right, that's using a special incantation for lava which is where we're trying to get away from. So there's a little bit of extra um, stuff, or sorry. So let's, let's look at what can we do, right? This, is, this was my aha moment, right? When I realized this is what Lava's looking for. Why don't I just make my test runner, my test case runner, just emit this stuff. So I got pseudocode that's sort of Pythonish on the left. So why don't I just go ahead and print out, hey, you know, lava signal start, TC, whatever, and then do my test, and then lava, you know, et cetera, okay? Why don't I just do that, see what happens? Um, and the result's gonna be exactly the same, right? Because again, that stuff's going to standard out, and lava is just observing standard out. It doesn't know whether lava test case, the script wrote it, or whether your runner ran it. Um, there's a little bit of extra stuff that's available. Um, it's not super commonly used, but you can have a numeric measurement. Um, so like in this case, just purely a number. Um, you could have pi emitted. And you can also have, a, um, have units, a measurement with units, so like you know, a velocity. Um, and so that just adds a couple extra you know, clauses to that last uh, statement, the lava test signal, lava signal test case um, line. So this is another idea that I had is like, oh, now I can actually have my test case runner uh, emit those things as well. Now I start seeing results showing up even with, uh, with measurements in units. 
So the first thing that my team looked at is PyTest. We're all really, really comfortable with Python. And so we just naturally went straight to PyTest. And we wanted to write all of our tests in that. <clears throat> so I gave a talk at ELC in Portland uh, last year about uh, running a rolling release with an uh, open embedded Yocto project based thing. And I disclosed that I had been doing this stuff with PyTest. And I talked about writing a PyTest plugin. Um, for various reasons, I haven't quite gotten that done yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you what we actually used. So what we really literally did is in the same folder where your tests exist, where you're going to call Py, you're going to say PyTest, go to this folder. In that folder, you put this special file called conftestpy. So PyTest is looking for this specific file name. And in this case, I need to convert the results from, Py, from PyTest, which was uh, this PyTest outcome, passed or skipped or X failed, right? So in Lava, there is no such thing as an X fail or a skip condition. Sorry, okay, uh, then I need to change this. Thank you very much. I, I meant to double check that and I didn't fact check myself. So I need to, that one line, you should change that to skip. Okay, uh, there is no X failed. So X failed should just be a pass, okay? Um, the, I think there might not have been a skip earlier or anyway, it doesn't matter. It, my bad, okay. Um, so the other thing that you need in this case is where are those actual signals gonna get emitted from? So there's a special function that we're overriding in this case. So it's a report type of function um, or type of object. And basically, you can see this is quite simple. Um, so we're looking at what is the, what is the status of, um, or where are we in, in the PyTest run? So this is traditional uh, unit testing. It's got setup and teardown clauses. Uh, so in the setup case, we want to emit that start signal. And then when it's actually in call, we're going to figure out what the result is at the end of everything. And then we're going to emit the, the end signal and the, the test case ID and end result. So this is uh, the simple case where there's no measurement in units. I have an appendix where I show how we would do it with, with units if, if we have time. Um, so this is what my test definitions look like before and after this change that I'm, I've done. So you could have just run, I picked Python 6 just because it happens or just because it happens to be a uh, module that uses PyTest. So you could have just run lava test case, um, give it a name, Python 3, 6 tests, and then just run a shell command, PyTest, okay? So really there's no difference from what we're calling. Um, on the right, we're just gonna say call PyTest directly. So the difference is if we look at what the output of the first run would be, we get all of the tests, everything that PyTest was gonna run in one big blob, and we get the result for the one big blob, and that's it, okay? Um, PyTest happens to, by default, ex, you know, output these dots for passes, and S for skips, and F for fail. But you can see, you know, it's still got the same pattern, right, over and over again, of start TC, end TC, test case. So what happens when I use that conf test pi that I just showed you? Okay, literally copy and paste that whole file into your, uh, into your area and, and run it. What we see is that it's gonna pick up each individual test case. So I've abbreviated this because it's you know, hundreds of lines, but um, you can see now there's actually a test case named add meta class that passed, and then there's a test ca case named add meta class nested that failed. So why do we care? The reason I care is I tend to do a lot of uh, looking at my results through the web UI. And so when you look at the results tab or the results uh, part of your Lava dashboard, in the first case, all I'm gonna see is Python 3, six tests, my entire test suite failed. If I click on that, it just shows me the top of the, 
the test suite or shows me the whole test suite failed and that's it. I don't really have much information. With the conf test pi that we added, I've got 20 pages of it with 10 on each page, 20 pages worth of results of test cases. And it actually shows me that the only thing that failed was this add meta class nested. And if I click on that now, it's actually going to take me straight to that part of the log or the output and show me what that, what that was, okay? So to me, this is a tremendous benefit for extremely little effort. And I don't have to do any post-processing. And if any of these tests failed at some weird random way that ended up making lava uh, crash out, I don't know how that would happen, but if it did, I might still have already captured some results. So, for this talk, I decided, let me go look at some more test runners and see what else can I do. Because this, this is a very, very simple technique. All I need to do is have a, a setup and teardown change. So BATS, Bash Automated Testing System. You get to write all your tests in, in Bash. So basically, I just added this, this dash L. So I added a, you know, a lava option here. And again, you can just copy and paste these. And, and this was a diffed on top of um, master as of a couple of days ago for BATS core. Uh, I need to you know, give some nice help info. So emit the signals to lava, blah, blah. I need to set up a flag and make it cleared before, before I start running. Um, I need to actually do something when the, that lava flag is being set. So I just set this variable to one. I check if that variable exists. And then I change the uh, executor to this, um, this bats format lava, st lava stream. And I just copied that straight from the bats format tap stream and just changed it a little bit. So here's this bats format lava stream, and I just did a diff between what I did and the tap, the lo bats format lava st uh, tap stream. So I added in uh, result measurements and units. Um, I have not actually implemented measurement and unit stuff yet to see if it works, but I put it in here anyway. And then at the beginning of the run, I need to do setup, because this is where I'm gonna actually emit the signal. So I needed to add that in. Again, I need to convert um, my results. And it, I, again, here I should have made this skip, but forgive me for that. Um, and again, we'd have to change this to fail. It turns out that uh, the test case names are gonna have spaces and things like that in it, and Lava needs that to be converted to something else. I just made them all an underscore, because that's a pretty common convention. So that's what this is doing. And then here, this buffer is sort of like printf, basically. It's, it's just a wrapper for another function. And so here, I just emit the start of the test case. Tear down, again, I need to, um, to manage this name, escape it, and I just buffer out the test signal end, and then I do a little bit of uh, testing to see um, whether I've got a measurement or not, and then, then emit, emit the, uh, the test case signal. So here's just a very basic uh, test definition. So again, on the left, you can still just run this pretty simply. In this case, the dash T is for tap output. It's a little bit easier to read. And over here, I've added my new L flag that I've created. So again, if you look at the original run, um, you're just gonna get a whole bunch of data, there's 70 different test cases here that ran, so there's a bunch of stuff I'm skipping, but I just showed the one thing that failed. And so the whole test run is gonna fail uh, because of that. But when I add the, uh, the, this dash L change, now again, I'm gonna see every single test case. And so I'm gonna see the output printed even when no, first, no final new line test case and so on and I'm still gonna be able to catch when an individual test case fails. 
and I've skipped a whole bunch of stuff because it's too much to put on the screen. So you're going to see this pattern, right? I'm just going to drill this into you, but forgive me. So for the whole run, I've got just this whole test suite that ran. My result is fail. If I click on that, it's going to take me to the entire log, which is hundreds and hundreds of lines long, and I've got to go searching for where the hell the failure was. You can grep it, you can do whatever you want to do with it, right? But ultimately, it's just frustrating to me to have to do that. I want to get to it as fast as I can. So what happens when I actually just add this very, these very few simple changes to the runner? All of a sudden, I get seven pages of results with 10, 10 results per page. And I get all the way down to seeing that, hey, these are the two test cases that failed. And now I can click on these and I can get straight to that part of the log immediately and see what the failure was, right? So what else can I do? So Jan Simone gave a, Mueller gave a very, very excellent introduction to p-test, part of the Yocto Project Open Embedded Test Suite uh, yesterday. So this uh, lets you test individual packages and you basically do the equivalent of make check or make test of whatever your software is. Uh, at, currently within uh, Lava, there's some Python scripts that do post-processing of p-test results. And they essentially will give you the same result that I'm going to show, but it's post-processed versus uh, process at the same time. So first thing I needed to do to make this work is modify the, the p-test runner to uh, a <laughs> test case. It's C++ uh, or C. I mean code. So I needed, whoops, I needed a flag. So I'm just going to create this flag in, in a way so we can expand it later in case we need more. Uh, I need to include that. I need to add a, uh, a new test runner or a new, new option. There was already an L option for list, and so I went with capital L. Uh, I need to add to the, these options that are available, I need to zero out those flags. Uh, I need to add the L, the capital L to the, the get opt and no colon after it because it doesn't take any values. I need to add this case for the checking for the L and we're just going to or bit or that value with uh, lava signal enable that flag and in this case I printed it out just so you can see and you know that you enabled that. In the main, or the utils.c, this is where the actual um, emission of the, the results happens. So I need to include that file. Turns out I need to um, get what the p-test name is, and that was what I did here. So this would have given, this directory would give me the, the path to, to the test, and I wanted the name of the exact test case. So I uh, get the results, uh, make a, make an array for that. We know it's going to be five characters because we've only got pass, fail, and skip. Here I knew it was skip for some reason, ignored it elsewhere. Um, and then we just check with just a regular and, is that bit set? And if it is, we're going to emit the start signal. So, then here, we're going to check if that exists. We're going to uh, print out whether it's a pass or a fail. Um, didn't add a, I guess I should modify this to add a skip option. Um, this is kind of the teardown, and so now we're going to uh, print out this, the end, end test case and the test case uh, ID stuff. Um, so not, I, you know, you, all of this code is there. It's pretty obvious. I'm not going to go into all of it. But um, so in this case, I am the uh, maintainer for the MetaPerl layer in Open Embedded. And so I wanted to do a bunch of tests on some uh, Debian named Perl modules. So on the left, we've got, you know, the way I could have done it. On the right, we've got this very similar but one modification running that capital L in there. Again, if I do the regular run, in this case, um, it's going to start the test case runner 
and it's going to start the first of all those things I had on the command line, or if I ran it with no, no options, it would run all the test cases available. And as Jan Simone Miller said in yesterday's talk, you end up with five megabytes or more of log that you have to go through and try to figure out what the results are. This at least breaks it up a little bit. And at the end of it all, you know, I've got hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of lines of, of output I skipped, and then the last test that ran happened to be libdigest HMAC Perl, and I get an overall result. If I use my change, again, you know, you're seeing this pattern, right? So now it actually says that the test case was this lib capture tiny Perl. That was the first in the list of te P tests that was going to run. The last one um, happened to be, oops. Anyway, this shouldn't be the identical, my, my bad. But anyway, I ran through a whole bunch of tests, and each one of them, each one of the test cases is going to run individually. So again, what I would normally see is just one great big blob pass, right? The entire p test run of everything that ran, what's the result? How do you drill down into that and see any, any differences? It's pretty hard. So with my change, I actually now see each individual p test suite that ran, and I see the result for that. In doing this, I actually caught that uh, the p test runner module that I, I modified personally in the past um, needs a little help because not, not all of these passed 100 percent, I don't think. So there's something missing there. But so just in summary, um, I think you can see this is really a very, very simple concept. I mean, I'm surprised I could spend this much time talking about it, but I wanted to go over at least a few options or a few examples of how you could do this. So I think it's, um, it really improves you know, the dashboard experience, what you can get out of it. It opens up the ability to do charting and queries, which I didn't really have time to prove and show you today, but it, there's a lot more you could do with, with the dashboard because of this. Um, I think it's way easier to find the cause of test failures PyTest, it works pretty well. Um, the output gets a bit cluttered because it's really just showing you whatever dot, whatever, and so on. I, it's, the output leaves a little bit to be desired. I do have an actual PyTest plugin, um, which I'm going to call PyTest Lava, I believe, as long as the lawyers agree with me. That's probably going to be hosted on kernelci.org, um, but I don't know yet. Um, the real reason that it's held up is because the me measurement decorator stuff that I've got in the appendix um, isn't all fully implemented yet. And if we have time, I'll go to that. Uh, BATS, I was surprised how well that worked. I mean, it's just, it was just easy. Um, it'd be nice, though, because of the way they did it, the tap output um, isn't there in, in the way I've got it running, and it's not easy to enable it. and so. Right now, the dash L and dash T options, the, the lava and tap output are, are exclusive. Um, and I haven't figured out exactly, you know, I haven't tried the measurement and, function, and units functionality yet. Um, it doesn't seem like it's that commonly used of a framework, so you know, that's something to consider. For p-test, what I caught here is that each test case in p-test parlance should really be like a test set or test suite or some other term in lava parlance. And we should actually break it down even further. So we need more work there. Um, I think we would get a lot better results, you know, at least for like the Perl examples, you know, each of the, the T slash whatever should be broken down. And I, this showed me that some failures might be hidden if you are not using, so the, the, in p-test, the runner is a script called or the thing that actually is evoked for each test case is a, a script called run p-test, which is usually bash. And I actually went back and caught the fact that I had not set x, right? I had not set this up to export the result of every single command that was running, and that's why I have hidden failures. So I'm going to go fix that when I, when I get back. Um, so I think going forward, you know, I think all of you, like, I'm literally giving you everything. I've given you all the code to make this work. Um, I, I think we should all go out there and enable more test runners. 
you know, whatever your favorite test runner is, let's figure out how to make that work. Uh, so I just want to thank everybody for this opportunity um, and thank some team members that really helped me out a lot in this work. And I'll go for questions now or we can show the measurement decorator thing, but yeah. So I think uh, I am 100% for tap, parser, tap parsing in Lava. In fact, I would like to have, rather than just the uh, CSV and YAML outputs, I'd like to be able to get JUnit or tap output from Lava. So that's a great thing, I, I think, absolutely. Um, not all of the tests that I'm going to be running here, not all of them have tap output, right? Yeah, but I think you're, I mean, you're absolutely right, and that's the, what I looked at was, could I figure out how to add that all into Lava easily, and what, how quickly could we get that in and, and merge it as a community, versus this was down and dirty and it worked, right? So I'm, I'm showing you a shortcut, it works, you're absolutely right, that's the better long-term solution. No doubt about it. There's others there as well, right? But that's, that's an obvious one in, in Lava, I think. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, sorry, can you come up to the mics? Sorry, I forgot to. This is recorded and lots of people watch these videos after the fact. I watch my own videos because I often forget what I worked on six months ago or a year ago. Thank you. Question is short. Uh, is there any plans to uh, do it with robot framework? To do that, what? Lava. Is there any Get plans to? To uh, make such a cooperation with robot framework? Can, do you know a robot framework? Oh, robot. Robot. Yeah, got it. Um, yeah, I used robot framework in the past. Uh, that one's a little bit more complicated because Robot Framework has an awful lot of ways of putting tests into it, which is why I didn't want to try to show it here, because showing what the tests actually were would be kind of difficult. And then uh, the output, it's got a lot of output options, but um, it sh it, this is fairly trivial to do, so we could absolutely do that in Robot Framework. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, And I, I've, I've, I've been a contributor to Robot Framework in the past, so we can absolutely look forward to doing that. Yeah, anything else? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show just the, the measurement stuff just really quickly. Um, so basically, uh, we still need that lava result converter. We modify the, um, the conf test.py a little bit um, because we add in the uh, ability to have this measurement text and we add in, in this case, um, the tests that we were running, we were run, running cyclic test, and we're actually printing the units and the measurement at the same time. Um, so this is you know, just a slight modification to what I showed earlier. The one big difference here, um, which I didn't even, I, I missed a line, I didn't import, um, oh, I did up here. So I have to import this measurement decorator and so the measurement, and then the measurement decorator is just this measurement object. Um, this is a little bit of a hack, but basically we just set up an array. And in this array, we basically end up um, setting up just a measurement and the units. So you just, your test case has to emit that or, or re return that. Um, this works for our case. It's a little bit hacky. It doesn't, it, it was not that easy to implement in the actual PyTest as a, as a plugin. Um, and it, there aren't that many tests that are actually emitting uh, measurements and, and uh, units, but this, this does work. Um, but it does require you to actually uh, change your uh, test case runner or your test cases themselves. Um, so I just didn't, 
I didn't really like this that much that we had to modify the test cases themselves because um, I thought that kind of breaks with my original theme was don't modify your test cases for Lava. Just modify your test case runner or modify Lava to parse it. But <coughs> anyway, that's, that's all I've got. Um, if anybody's got any other questions about this or automated testing in general, uh, I'll be around and happy to talk to you. Anybody, anybody, anything else? Okay, thank you so much.